Greetings class. Uh, this is the second part of the video. It's Horace Mann part two. I'm going to go over moral education and religious education. I would say in terms of moral education, it's very vague. I would say it's Mann's weakest section of his essay. But essentially what he wanted, he uses a verse from Proverbs, the Bible. Um, it's at the very bottom of page four where he says, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not, not depart from it. And basically what he's saying here is if you teach a child um, the golden rules, right from wrong, as a child, then they'll grow, they'll grow up to be responsible adults. And I like that idea. I don't know if I 100% agree with that idea, because just because you teach a child wrong from right as a child doesn't mean they're going to grow up to be responsible adults. But I would say the odds are pretty good. Um, I do think this is a, a, a challenging part of his essay, though, because we have to wonder, should we be teaching morals in school? Because it seems like that should be the parent's responsibility. And of course, Horace Mann would say it's everybody's responsibility. But um, I think that's tricky. I think that's a hard idea. And I question that. Um, we do teach morals in elementary school. Um, we teach if kids behave, they get a cupcake, they get a star, they get a, a letter home. It seems like our school system focuses a lot on punishing rather than rewarding good behavior. Um, some people advocate that we should be teaching morals and we should be rewarding good behavior in middle school and high school. I personally, I like that idea, but I think that's tricky as well because as an adult, you're not rewarded. Um, I don't get a letter from the government saying, you didn't lie all week. And I think that'd be scary to get that letter because I'd be wondering, how do you know <laughs> why are you spying on me? So... Maybe insurance agencies reward you for good behavior. If you don't get a speeding ticket and things like that, your costs go down. But typically, we don't get rewarded for good behavior because it's expected of it, of us. And I do think that morals are divisive because a teacher might have different morals from the parents. And I think that's so tricky. The teacher may have worse morals than the parents or the teacher might have better morals than the parents. And I, I think you're going to get in a lot of fights if you really get into this idea and really enforce it upon the school system. Um, here is my idea. and I'm an English teacher and it's not my idea. I've, I've researched this one um, a lot. Of, and I like this argument. It goes, um, you can teach morals through literature. And all, being an English teacher, I like this idea. Because anytime you read a book, you're, you're posed with a character who must decide, make a moral decision. And you yourself can judge them. And you can say, I think they made the right decision or I may think they made the wrong decision. And maybe you could allow the kids to explore that on their own without enforcing morals on them. Um, what what are problems with moral education today? Some people say that we're we're not doing moral education. We sh we should be doing more. We should be teaching the golden rules. We have a lot of issues with bullying in our school system today. We have violence in our school system today. Um, so I think this one's still very prevalent in our school system. Um, and this last section is religious education. And if you read this the first time you read it, you might be thinking he wants. Um, he wants schools to teach Christianity. And I, I can see, I mean, technically he was coming from a Christian standpoint, a background. However, what his idea is, is he wants all religions to be taught. He wants all religions to be taught. And um, I'm really summarizing page six, I believe, six. So last sentence where he's saying that um, we, we should teach all religion and then a child could decide for themselves what religion to choose. Uh, and I like that idea. So that's one idea that he has. And the other idea, he's kind of like political education. He's saying that if you're going to teach religion, you shouldn't be biased. It's a recurring idea throughout his essay. Um, and some people, I talk to some students, and they say they had a religious education. Some say they didn't. Um, I'll give you, if you're looking for arguments or for a paper or problems for a paper or things like that, that you could use for our first essay, I think there's two, well, there's several sides to this one. One way to look at religious education in schools, it could be a good thing because it could teach, um, awareness, tolerance. A lot of Americans have no idea what's going on inside their own state, let alone other countries. And I think we would have a better understanding of the Middle East if we were, a uh, studying religion we'd have a better understanding of other countries if we knew the religion because a lot of times that's the core of the culture i think if you're going to understand language then a lot of times religion plays into that as well so i, I think there's that um 
And also, I, I like the idea that if you teach a lot of different religions, then a child could find their own way, or they could choose not to be religious. Um, so those are two good arguments I see for it. And I have a couple other reasons for why we maybe shouldn't teach religion in schools. One, it's very divisive. Um, in San Diego, um, there was a school, the parents got upset because the school was teaching kids yoga. And I'm not kidding. They were teaching kids yoga. And the school, the parents got upset because you're teaching religion. And if people are getting not upset about in San Diego about yoga, I have no idea how they would feel in Alabama or the South if people are teaching yoga in schools. So I think it could be divisive and contentious. And because because of that, I don't know if it's worth it to teach in schools. Um, also, if you're going to teach um, all religions, um, that could be controversial because you might be teaching paganism or voodooism, voodoo or something like that. And I don't know how much parents would like that. And also to really get into religion, you'd really have to spend time going over the different branches and sects and things like that. And just to go over the different branches of, of Christianity could take forever. And I don't know if that's worth the class time. And the last argument is Horace Mann says that teachers shouldn't be biased. But I think if you're teaching religion, you are going to be biased. Now, I have had some students who say my teacher wasn't biased. I think that's great. I just think that's hard to do. If you're a Buddhist, chances are you're going to spend more time on Buddhism than the other sections. And if you're going to be biased, e even if you're atheist, you could be biased. So if you're going to be biased, why teach it? So I see that side too. I think it's a good argument for our paper coming up. We're brainstorming. Um to use, you, you could say that we should be teaching religion in school or we should have religious studies in school. I think that's a good argument if you want to make it and you could use that. That's a platform that you could go. And just to recap, I went over all the sections of Horace Mann. There are four. There are education, mood, poverty. There is um, political education, moral education, religious education. And remember this for your first essay, you're going to have to summarize two of those sections, not the whole section, just parts of the section. So if you're summing, summarizing political education, you want to summarize learning government, learning law, teachers shouldn't be biased, um, um, things like that. You would maybe look at um, um, we students should understand the right to vote. You would summarize that section, right? And then you might summarize moral education. But there's four sections total, and I spent a lot of time on this because I know it's a hard essay, and I wanted you guys to understand it. Okay? Thank you.